pray then. Dear Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us tonight to come and to look into it and to hear your voice speaking through it. Father, we pray that you would apply it to us also. Lord, how good it is to know that our Father in heaven has been bound to us from all eternity. Not because of us, but this has been your heart's desire to be bound to your people. And so, Lord, here we are tonight, those who are brought together, bound together in the scarlet cord of the blood of Jesus Christ, and we thank you so much that in him you've given us everything we need. So, Lord, as we come to your word tonight, <clears throat> we do so with a desire to hear from the Holy Spirit. And just before we do come to your word, Father, we would pray for uh, so many situations around the world, uh, conflicts that are taking place, and uh, we pray, Father, for your hand to be uh, upon your own people and that you would lead and guide and protect and that you would bring to a, an end the, the suffering in so many places across the globe. Father, we think of our own land and we know that there's political turmoil, if not military turmoil. We thank you for that, but we pray, Lord, that your hand would be upon the leaders of our land and that they would know wisdom from God. And Father, we do pray for Joan. Ask your blessing to be upon her and to uh, make her strong again and quickly. And we ask that you would do all that you intend. May this be a blessing in disguise for Joan, that she would find her strength re renewed and restored. Father, we thank you for the opportunity now to be in your word, and we pray for a blessing from it. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to turn to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 8. The Apostle Paul writes, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And we ask God to bless his word to us. The title tonight is Guard Against the Spoiling. Guard Against the Spoiling. Paul issues us with a serious warning in our text. He says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. The whole letter to the Colossians affirms the supremacy of Jesus Christ. He's supreme above everything. He uh, is all sufficient. He's over all things. And the letter urges believers to remain rooted in him and to be unswayed by false teaching. And the verse we read reflects Paul's heart's concern for, for this church, that they would avoid anything that distracts them from the centrality of Christ. And we know that message is relevant in every age, and it's relevant in our age, as we are surrounded by ideologies and philosophies that threaten to lead us astray, that threaten to distract Christians empty philosophy, human tradition, worldly principles. These are all things Christians fall for. We know that because we've done it. These are all things that cause us difficulty as believers at times. Because so many of them, well, most of them sound really good. 
There are times when these different philosophies sound, hmm, that could be right, you know. We might not replace Christ with that, but we might be tempted to add it to what we believe. And there's the downfall. There's the disaster, because we start to be distracted. Paul warns that these philosophies that seem wise are ultimately hollow and empty and meaningless. They lead you nowhere but hell. Because they're all rooted. If it's not Jesus Christ, everything else is rooted in humanity. Everything else is rooted in human beings, human wisdom rather than God's truth. And when we put it like that and, and, and we think about it, it's ridiculous, isn't it? It's just ridiculous that we fall for these things. When the Bible tells us it's Christ and Christ alone, when life is about Christ and Christ alone, we live for him and for no one else. Yet there are times when the temptation is strong to follow something just momentarily even but it means nothing. Anything that takes you away from Jesus Christ and him crucified is of the devil. The devil prompts man to come up with these other things. Because only the devil wants us to stay away from the cross. Because as we stay away from the cross, we stay away from salvation. If we're unbelievers and we don't, uh, uh, we're deceived by the enemy into all these other things that we see around us, that's keeping men and women from Calvary. That's evil. But then when Christians get saved, when, when we get saved and we move on in our lives, the devil doesn't stop coming in. He doesn't stop trying to attract us and, and distract us. He wants to blind us to the cross is all sufficient. There is no need for anything else. You don't need to add to the cross because it's all been done at Calvary. We know this and it's marvelous. But you see, we need to be wary of elevating human reason even just to the same level as divine revelation. We need to be careful. Whole sections of the church have done exactly that. They've lifted up man's teaching, man's thoughts, man's wisdom, and they follow that in conjunction with scripture. But what we find normally happens is that man's thoughts are raised higher than scripture. The Roman Catholic Church does that. Their traditions are given the same authority as the word of God. We must reject that kind of thing. And it's not just them others too. So we need to be very careful that, that we don't allow human wisdom to usurp the place of divine revelation. Not only is it tragic, but it's, it's just absolute rebellion against God. We're here tonight because we love the Lord Jesus. We're here tonight because we want to follow him. We're here tonight because we want to be where he is and go where he's going. Therefore, we need to be careful about how we do that. In Romans chapter 1, verse 21, this horrible passage, Paul's speaking about the way things are. He says, They knew God, and they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. 
but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools because they were looking somewhere other than Christ. Their lives were crumbling around them. Uh, all kinds of stuff had entered into their lives because they, had, they were looking away from God. They weren't focused on him. And they thought they were wise. They thought they knew what they were doing. They thought they had it sussed. They thought that they would be the ones to determine their own truth. And what happened was drastic. James emphasizes the same idea that true wisdom comes from God and God alone. It's not part of being human. Oh, it's part of being truly human. Christ. But it's not part of our fallen nature. We don't have wisdom. God has wisdom. And James says in James 1.5, if you lack wisdom, ask God. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally. And of course we know that when James says all men, he doesn't mean all men. He means all men who ask God for God's wisdom, receive that wisdom. It doesn't mean that all human beings get the wisdom of God. That's not true. If that was true, then my goodness me, that we wouldn't have been the mess that we're in in every nation in the land and in, in the world. But ask God for wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's what the Proverbs tells us. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So true wisdom is found in Christ, hallelujah. True wisdom is found outside of ourselves. Not in worldly philosophies that pull us away from him. Paul warns against the traditions of men as well. He says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. This is something else we need to be really careful of. I don't know whether I told you before, but an Orthodox rabbi, a Reformed rabbi, came into the college to speak to us. Can't remember why he was in, but he was in. And he said, you know how they keep the Torah? They keep it in a case and they keep it locked away. He says, there was a, I don't know if I've told you this or not, but there was a beam came down in the synagogue where the, the Torah was. He says, and uh, so you had to bow down get the Torah and come out like that and stand up again. He said that they moved to, a, after many, many years, they moved to another synagogue and the Torah was in its case. And they would go up, they would bow down and they'd take the Torah and they'd stay bowed down until they came out, but there was no beam. This is just something they always did. He said it wasn't until a while later we realized this made us look stupid caught up in tradition that doesn't matter. Some tradition's great and it's helpful, but the minute it binds us up, my goodness me, we need to say no thank you. No thank you. Anything that holds us back from the liberty that we have in Christ is not a helpful tradition. And it doesn't matter how much we cherish them. If they're not allowing us to be free 
in Christ. We'll be singing about the captives being freed. If we do something that stops that, just because it's what we've done, then we need to stop doing it. And I know that might be unpleasant for some people to hear. But you see, tradition is there to help. If there is tradition, it's to help us. It's to focus us on Jesus. It's to help us stay on the right path, knowing that we, if, if we stay on that path, we don't wander from the side, it, it, we're okay. It's there to help us. It's to, it's to guard us and to keep us. But the minute it gets in the way, the minute it becomes so important that everything else has to bow down to that, and we cannot be who we are in Christ, then there's something wrong. Paul says, don't let anyone spoil you. Do you see that? Spoil you. Don't let them ruin you because of empty philosophies, vain deceit, in those philosophies or by human tradition. You remember Jesus in, in Mark chapter 7, verse 8, he rebuked the Pharisees for that very thing. And he said to the Pharisees that they laid aside the commandment of God. Laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the, trad the tradition of men. In other words, the tradition that you have come up with is more important to you than the word of God. Thank God for Zion. Have you ever had an argument? Argument? A discussion about the Constitution? Constitutions are fine. They are not Scripture. And that includes Zion's constitution. It might have been created by men seeking the leading of God, but it's still a product of men. And it's fine for what it is. I remember somewhere else fighting with deacons to get them to realize and admit that the constitution, the traditions that they had created years ago were not as valid as the Bible. Can you believe that? So we need to say no. Traditions can be helpful, but the minute they're unhelpful, we leave them alone. Because you and I, are free to serve Jesus Christ. You and I are free to live our lives as Christ shapes them and molds them. And as we go into the future, we keep the Constitution. Oh, hallelujah. And we hold to the traditions that are so crucial for this church. So don't anybody hear me say other than that. But if anything comes across the path of what God wants to do, then we do what God wants to do. We can always change other things. You see, you can never change the word of God. You can never change what the Bible teaches us. And this is where we thank God for the men who put together the constitution of this church. Because it's a, it, it is a biblical constitution. While it's not scripture, it is a biblical constitution. Have you ever had that kind of discussion? Have you ever had these kinds of thoughts? We're free, hallelujah. There are no chains on us. Jesus comes to us and says, the future I have for you is a full future, free and full. I will tell you 
what to do, how to do it, and where to go. Everything that man has ever brought together can be kept in review under the authority of the Word of God. You know, there are uh, churches all over the world, of course, that come under the Westminster Confession, the Westminster Catechism. But that's no scripture. We follow the Bible. And when we see in these different things these different creeds and confessions, something beautiful, we rejoice in it. But when we see something which doesn't facilitate us being Christian the way we believe we should be, we are able to say, no, thank you. Is that not a beautiful place to be? That's freedom. Freedom is us being able to say, The Bible says that's where we'll go. Now, these folks will say, well, that's exactly right. We, we have put together these different things because we, we believe it's what the Bible says. Well, fair enough. But if my liberty in Christ Jesus is curtailed because of someone who doesn't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, bye-bye. If my liberty is curtailed by those who believe that we must do it this way because it's always been done, or we mustn't do that because we've tried it before and we've tried it again and it didn't work, that doesn't matter. If Jesus Christ is speaking to us today and moving in us today, then today is a new day. Behold, I'll do a new thing. Paul says, don't be spoiled by traditions. Don't be spoiled by false and empty philosophies. He says, don't be spoiled by the rudiments of the world. Don't be spoiled after the, the rudiments of the world worldly principles that promise self-reliance and materialism, self-sufficiency. The rules of the world, the rules of the, of the world today come from the one who is influencing the world today. Now, I'm not saying we should be lawbreakers. I'm not saying we should be bad citizens. Again, as we saw in Peter, whatever the rudiments of the world tell us, whatever the principles of the world tell us, the moment they cut across the word of God, we refuse to be influenced by the rudiments of the world. We just can't do it. Forces of evil. The world lies under the sway of the evil one. The systems of the world. Paul says in Romans 12, too, that we've not to conform to the world. We've not to think the way the world thinks. We've not to do what the world does. We've not to be like the world. We're in Christ. Christ should be the focus. The world tries to tell us how to think and what to think. Now, I'm not talking about conspiracy theories here. I don't mean all that. But there are, the world is trying to tell us what to think, how to think. We are in Christ. Jesus tells us what to think and how to think. The Bible is what we think. That might get us into trouble. Well, 
that might get us into trouble. We follow the word. We follow the saviour. Paul says, don't be spoiled by being like the world. Your, your sufficiency is in Christ. He says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. There it is. We are a blessed fellowship in that Christ is so key, so important for us, that Christ is at the center of our lives. But that being the case, we need to guard against all this other stuff, against all these other ways of, of living. Guard against thinking that I can bring in philosophies that are not necessarily Christian, but I can bring them in. Sound quite, quite interesting, quite good. I can, I can bring in traditions of men. I can bring in the principalities or the, the rudiments of the, of the world. Because you see, that kind of philosophy leads to us saying things like, I can determine my own truth. I'm free. I'm free in Christ to determine my own way. I can decide what's right. And you can decide what's right. And if what you decide is right doesn't affect me, then that's okay. We're in Christ, we can do that. No, we're not. You see, we're not free to do that. When we are in Christ, Christ tells us what the truth is. Christ tells us the way forward. Christ tells us what we can tolerate. Christ tells us what we are able to engage in. Christ tells us who we are, what we are, and who we will be forevermore. Christ tells us that we must live our lives in this way and not in that way. And because if we live in that way, we think we're in Christ. It doesn't matter what we do, when we do it, who we do it with. It's okay. He's going to forgive me. Well, let me put that right, right now. Brothers and sisters, I'm not angry at you. I'm speaking to some people online tonight. You have no right to live your life that way. You must live in Christ as Christ determines. And he hasn't left us guessing. He's put it in here. Paul says, don't let them spoil you by telling you about these false philosophies, these empty ways, these human traditions, these rudiments of the world you follow christ folks as we go into the future as a, a church and as individuals that's our safety that's the joy we have that we can walk forward in christ and we can be guided by him in all that we do and we can jettison that which doesn't fit without worry without fear because it's christ that will tell us I just felt this so heavy on my heart this week. Not because there's a Christian in this church who needs to hear this simply. We do. That we can guard against it. But I believe that there are people who are watching in tonight. I believe that with all of my heart. Who are all mixed up. And they think they can have Christ and everything else. No, we can't. It spoils you. It ruins your faith. It ruins your walk. Thank God we have Jesus. Thank God we preach him here. Thank God we will never lose him. 
but let's be on guard. Father, we thank you as we go uh, into a time of prayer tonight that you've given us this. Uh, you've given us this message, Father God. I need to be reminded, oh Father, to keep focused on Christ, to keep focused on my beautiful Saviour. Lord, we are so grateful that here in Zion, Christ has always been preached. He's always been central. He is the foundation of this church. We praise your holy name for that. And as you call us into a future that we're excited to look at, as you call us in, Father God, would you help us just to be on guard against the spoiling? Because the devil is a wily enemy. So I commit my brothers and sisters here tonight, I commit us all into the hands of Jesus that we would hear you say, this is the way, walk ye in it. And we ask it in Jesus' name, amen.